the growing shift from romanticism to realism uh, takes a particularly poignant turn with Heinrich Heine, the, uh, the German poet of the, uh, the early to mid 1800s. Uh, he offers a vision that is at once um, capable of romanticism and somewhat sentimentalizing uh, reality, but that ultimately knows that, all right, that's not, that's not quite sufficient. It's a little too honest for romanticism to really hold for him. So you can see it in Silesian Weavers, this tale of uh, labor conditions, to be perfectly honest, uh, a very prosaic topic for a romantic poet, let's say. Uh, taking a side in politics is, uh, is a very common romantic thing. We see it in Shelley, obviously, but uh, that kind of, a kind of cold-eyed realism creeps into this that we we don't quite Shelley can't quite bring himself to in somber eyes no tears of grieving grinding their teeth they sit at their weaving oh Germany at your shroud we sit we're weaving a three cold a threefold curse in it we're weaving we're weaving a curse on the God we prayed to kneeling with cold in our bones and hunger reeling. We waited and hoped in vain, persevered. He scorned us and duped us, mocked and jeered. We're weaving, we're weaving. A curse on the king of the rich man's nation who hardens his heart at our supplication, who wrings the last penny out of our hides and let us be shot like dogs besides. We're weaving, we're weaving. A curse on this false fatherland, teeming with nothing but shame and dirty scheming, where, where every flower is crushed in a day, where worms are regaled on rotten decay. We're weaving, we're weaving. The shuttle flies, the shuttle flies, the loom creaks loud. Night and day we weave your shroud. Old Germany, at your shroud we sit. We're weaving a threefold curse in it. We're weaving, we're weaving. <sighs> You can see the, uh, the pressures of, obviously, uh, labor unrest. Uh, the, uh, these weavers are, uh, feel like they're being exploited. That, that, uh, that refrain, we're weaving, we're weaving, it's just going. It's a repetitive motion, weaving, 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 weaving. That's all they do all day long for Lord knows how, how long in a day, how many hours in a day. Um, but this sense of just repetitive, mindless work that they're just always more, always more, always more, always more, that pressure to produce, um, it takes on a, even more uh, uh, significance when you, when you consider that Heine was a Jew living in Germany in the 1800s as nationalism, spurred on by romanticism, it, uh, has been surging and so there was, there was some considerable, although it will get much worse, uh, anti-Semitism at the time. So he would feel like a bit of an outsider through that. Um, you get the sense of that certain hostility to Germany itself. You know, the curse on this false fatherland. Old Germany at your shroud we sit. Uh, th they are somehow locked out of this image of uh, Germany triumphant, the romantic uh, notion of Germany, born essentially by Goethe, uh, but reaching back to the old Germanic, uh, Germanic tribes of uh, the, the Roman era, the, that, um, that sense of uh, they are struggling against something that they'll never really achieve. They can weave all day, weave all day, weave all day, but they're coming up against um, a kind of ideal of Germany that's evolving without them. Uh, it is romantic in the way that they are alienated through this uh, mechanistic uh, industrialism where they are just machines also weaving, 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 weaving. That's all they have to do. They are machines. They are dehumanized that way. This is a very romantic notion. Uh, 
they seem to be mourning perhaps the folkways of the old times where it's not mechanized, where you weave, you know, you make an entire garment on yourself until you get to industrialization breaks up that task into all those discrete tasks that, um, you know, one person does one little thing every day, all day for 18 hours a day, perhaps. Uh, this sense of isolation, of frustration, of uh, alienation, uh, that is at its heart anti-industrial. Uh, seeking at once to go back to a simpler time, perhaps, before it was so mechanized. But at the same time, they're a little bit cast out of that because if you start going back, then you're getting back into the romantic uh, belief of restoring old Germany. Uh, old Germany, at your shroud we sit, uh, that's still a supplicant position. Uh, it's, it's a very troubling, <clears throat> no-win situation, essentially, for, uh, for these people. Um, and it has historical uh, background you can read about in footnotes, but it's that sense of uh, a troubled intermediary zone uh, between romanticism and, uh, and, uh, and realism, where you can feel like the weavers themselves. They have no idea, well, do we want to go forward? Do we want to go back? You know, you don't know. You're just stuck. And all you can do all day long, if, since you don't have any other answers, is the work, because that's all you have time for. Um, some of his other pieces that are awfully fun, uh, short little tight things. Uh, a young man loves a maiden. Uh, a young man loves a maiden who chooses another instead. This another loves still an, this other loves still another, and these two happily wed. The maiden out of anger marries with no regard. The first good man she runs into, the young man takes it hard. The young lad takes it hard. It is, an, it is so old a story, yet somehow always new, and he that has just lived it, it breaks his heart in two. Again, uh, a little uh, sing-songy romanticism uh, with a little twist at the end that sort of like it admits that, all right, yeah, this is, this is all silly, this is all ridiculous, but still it hurts. The reality is love still hurts. Um, and, and this is, uh, this is a, a, a really poignant little poem, I think, where you get the, it, it's the eternal quality of art. Um, even if that art is sort of degraded into cliche as that simple little story that they're laying out, which is the plot to every bad sitcom ever or every bad romantic comedy ever. Um, it's, it's a kind of realistic romanticism at its heart there. That's a fun line to straddle because again, Heine is a, a man without a country essentially, um, in, in the literary sense, at least here where he is a, um, he's not quite comfortable in any mode, uh, romanticism, realism, he's trying it all on and making do with it when he can but seeing that everything seems to come up a little short. Uh, a pine is standing lonely in the north on a bare plateau. He sleeps, a bright white blanket enshrouds him in ice and snow. He's dreaming of a palm tree oh, far away in, an east, in the eastern land, lonely and silently mourning on a sunburnt rocky strand. Ooh, you get a sense of uh, the imagination there and the dreaming, the sense of loneliness that is so romanticism, sense of yearning um, and, and sentimentality. Here he's, he's, he's going very, he, this is an earlier one, he's going much more uh, towards, uh, towards romanticism with this, but you know, the, the nature imagery, whatever, but it, 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 it's, a, it's a sweet little lyric tell the truth. When springtime comes, the sun and showers bring out a host of dancing flowers, like Wordsworth. 
And when at night the moon peeps through, the stars begin to twinkle too. And when the bard sees two blue eyes, soulful songs materialize. But songs and stars and dancing flowers and azure eyes and April showers, however really, however popular such stuff, it's never really quite enough. <laughs> Oof. That's, uh, I, I, uh, again, a kind of uh, little twist at the end where he's tossing out these images of classic romanticism, uh, nature, and, you know, sweet romance, little R romance. Uh, and then at the end, you know, uh, the songs and stars and dancing flowers and azure eyes and April showers, he's just sort of reeling off these cliches. However popular such stuff, it's never really quite enough. That doesn't sustain you. That doesn't really get the job done. Um, perhaps as much as, well, you know, the ordinary stuff. Um, having someone, having some purpose, having a home, having real, uh, having realism in your life having real, tangible, material comforts, benefits, but it's never really quite enough. That's romanticism on its way to realism, always feeling left short. <laughs>